Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, is is it uh, visible slides? Hello. The slides uh, it has not come. Vinayak Hegde has started screen sharing, but uh, it is showing here. Uh, once again, you can you, you can close it and again. You, Still, not it. Still, uh, it hasn't come, sir. Uh, you can. As, uh, okay, I will stop sharing once again. Stop sharing. Bye, once again. Okay, once again. Uh, 
Okay. It has come, sir. Now. Okay. Okay. I guess I already now visible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, all students, uh, for the Kalpa Graduate Readiness Program. I think last uh, few weeks, all of you have uh, attended. I hope for uh, you the program uh, on various aspects of coconut. Today, uh, I would like to cover on uh, disease of coconut mainly and uh, diagnosis and uh, their management. So myself, I am, as uh, you have told, I am working here for the last 10 years in uh, coconut and arecanut and cocoa diseases. So I will share the whatever uh, we are doing or whatever has been done and the major diseases which will be useful for you in the uh, coming uh, uh, your career, wherever you go, either for uh, any uh, higher studies in the plantation crops, especially in the coconut. So uh, the first coconut disease if we come, why we have to protect from the diseases? Is it really necessary to go for uh, protecting from the diseases? See, as you know, there is an increasing demand for food and uh, global food production must increase by 50% uh, by 2050, as we all know. And uh, though Western disease management yielded a role in doubling the food production over the last uh, 40 years, but still pathogens still cause around 10 to 16% to percent global harvest globally. It varies from some years, it may be up to some crops, it may go up to even 50% loss or 100% loss. So, but overall in average, around 10 to 16% every year, we are losing because of the disease, diseases. So, it is even in post-harvest, again, there are losses. In financial terms, we lose about $220 billion as per the reports. We are losing just because of disease and problem. So this is again, I am telling reduction in crop yield as well as quality is the major uh, important. It will reduce the quality. And uh, what are these factors? And uh, why to protect this coconut? Coconut usually, as we know in the coastal area, it will be there, as you all know, many coastal areas are with coconut and nobody cares, it seems, looks like that. And uh, why to protect them? Why to protect from that disease? It is because, as we know, it is a cultivated farm and like many other uh, plantation crops like arecanut, coconut, these are cultivated by many small and marginal farmers and their livelihood depends on coconut, coconut as well as uh, coconut products. Large number of people depend on coconut and coconut industry also lot, large people depends on that. So sustaining production and productivity is the major uh, this one. So we have to go for protecting these farms from the disease. So coming to diseases, if we see there are uh, different factors which may cause disease that as uh, biotic as well as abiotic. Abiotic, as you all know, it may be due to temperature or uh, unfavorable soil conditions, physiological, physical injuries, all. Whereas biotic, I am going to cover mainly the biotic uh, factors which are responsible for disease and the major disease of coconut. So one is uh, fungus, fungi, what we call bacteria, viruses, viroids, phytoplasma, nematodes, protozoa, algae. I think this all you must have studied in um, your uh, basic plant pathology course in BSc agrees. So uh, uh, these are the major one. Coming to today's topic where I am going to cover about major diseases of coconut. In coconut, as um, I am giving in this slide, you can go through major diseases are only five, six I have listed here, though there are more than 125 pathogens have been reported on coconut, fungal pathogens and many other uh, uh, bacteria, viroid, virus, all. But very few are globally important. So one is uh, Phytophthora disease, this is called Phytophthora bud rot, which is a lethal disease causing about 3 to 5% of coconut trees every year, especially in India, wherever the high rainfall area, this Phytophthora disease is our major problem. Then uh, another major disease is basal stem rot, or this is also called as Tanjavur wilt. Tanjavur wilt is another major problem, and it is called by Ganoderma lucidum and another Ganoderma aplanatum species also has been reported. 
this is also another important disease uh, in many parts, especially in uh, Maidan tracts of uh, Andhra Pradesh as well as well in uh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Coastal area also it is there, but compared to that uh, Maidan tracts, it is not much in other areas. Then uh, this root wilt disease, root wilt disease you must have heard even in, I don't know whether the plantation crops for coconut, how many of you have studied in your uh, this, this, this is more than 100 year old disease. Uh, this one, this is uh, caused by a phytoplasma. I will explain what phytoplasma and uh, in the subsequent slides. Then this is another fungal disease, stem bleeding. This is also one of the major disease, but uh, prevalent throughout most of the places it is there. Whereas leaf blight, another, uh, uh, this, is, this is leaf spots and blight. Of course, spots are there everywhere, but uh, this type of blight disease is common uh, in certain places and it has emerged as a major disease in coconut plantations. So coming to one by one regarding the Phytophthora disease, uh, Phytophthora bud rot, it is causes the bud rot in case of coconut. Phytophthora is, as you know, phyto means plant, thora means destroyer. So Phytophthora is, is a plant destroyer. You must have heard about late blight of potato, which is in many places, many other diseases, Phytophthora diseases, are the causes a havoc in most of the uh, plants. So it is called as plant destroyer fungus. So this is the species where Phytophthora palmivora is also causes uh, uh, this uh, bud rot in case of uh, coconut. It is a lethal disease. How to detect? Uh, how to find that it is a bud rot or not? So the initial symptom, if you see any coconut garden, you will see that that um, initial symptoms will be yellowing and just drooping and drying of the spindle leaf. That is spindle or sphere leaf, which is in the other, all the other leaves will be green. There will be the, even bunches may be there, but only the uh, spindle will become uh, dry up. So when the farmers notice or you notice and if you take it out, it will come out completely. And if you see that by the time there will be rotting of the whole tissue and uh, after some time this will be only no uh, spindle will be there only leaves uh, lower leaves will be left so finally whole plants will be killed so it is a lethal disease so varies from 1 to 30 percent all palms of age are susceptible incidence of prone to be high in palms below the age of 20 years so this is spread from wind blown rains as this phytophthora as you know it is a sporangial fungus, it produces the sporangia uh, in the UG mycology or even in the plant pathology course, fungal pathology, practically you must have seen there are sporangias will be produced by this Phytophthora in the rainy season, especially it is a rainy season fungus, mainly in the high humid area, it will be heavy incidence will be there. So another point here is, this is a mainly in the soil born, how this top it has gone, that is the problem, how it is going here, the major source is in the soil, the either this type of deroserous slugs or the ants or something, whichever going through this one, they carry the inoculum. And uh, when it goes to this tissues, here the problem will be the uh, it will infect the the young most tissues. The very young tissues are being infected, so that causes the rotting. And by the time we notice, there will be damage of the nuts and this whole tree, well, these are the trees where there is no crown is falling. You can see this is mainly because of bud rot. This is all in the hilly tracks or in the heavy rainfall area where coconuts are there. This is the one of the major disease, one of the major uh, problems for the coconut production. So this is caused by sporangia. Main causal organism is Phytophthora palmivora species. This is a type of sporangia, papillate sporangia. You can see here it contains produced juice pores, and juice pores are released during rainy season. So it will spread through wind blown rains. So, though there are different species have been reported, but Phytophthora palmivora is the major dominant species which is causing coconut bud rot. Then, this the same fungus can also infect the nuts and, well as, and cause the dropping of the nuts and causes, you can see the phosphorangeal infection in these uh, nuts, which causes the nut to uh, drop. 
so this is another uh, symptoms of the same fungus which may cause uh, the blood drop also so this is what i have uh, already explained this is the a slug species which we have studied that it can able to feed on the infected tissues and it will be there you can see in the rainy season it will uh, uh, be seen in the coconut uh, trunk all you can see it will be climbing and going so this this is one of the carriers of the inoculum from soil to or from infected tree to other trees so we have checked in the laboratory also whether phytophthora culture so it can feed on phytophthora cultures also so that is a, a, a voracious feeder on phytophthora and it, it is the and the fecal matter of this fungus we have examined to contain the spores of this phytophthora and can able to induce the disease this is the so how to manage this disease or control uh, is uh, we have to go for preventive measures mostly uh, most of the phytophthora disease once it starts it is very difficult to uh, control so what we advise especially in coconut once it starts it may be difficult to go for spray immediately like other crops at least once one plants infected we may starts spraying but here it may be very difficult so what we advise is go for precautionary measures preventive measures before the onset of monsoon in most of the endemic area where high rainfall and history of bud rot is major problem so remove all the disease advanced at dead palms because this acts as a source of inoculum so we have to remove the affected palms then crown cleaning so crown cleaning means that all the that dried up spate and other problems they cause they may harbor the inoculum and causes the uh, inoculum load in the subsequent season so field hygiene and crown cleaning as well as adopt management practices like under rhinoceros attack as we all know rhinoceros beetle i think a pest already has been covered how it damages so that damage injury make palms more prone to the phytophthora infection so 1% bordo mixture is known to be very good effective so in the crown region during summer uh, may end just before the onset of monsoon we have to pour this bordo mixture to prevent this will help to prevent the disease or we can go for fungicides like uh, this uh, metalaxyl mancojab sachi we can prepare or chlorothalonil sachi any of the uh, this uh, specific fungicides we can put a sachi small make a small hole and make hang it inside the in, inside the leaf axils of the innermost leaf axil where the bud rot starts as i told it will be in the sp spindle leaf so just before below that we have to paste this uh, sachets and we can also go for the trichoderma it is on cpcri technology has been developed where trichoderma is incorporated in the coir pith and this small type of cake has been produced and we can produce we can place this type of trichoderma also inside the uh, leaf axils so that this will help to reduce the incidence of the this one once during rainy season we have to go for prophylactic fungicide by control treatment at two months interval because every two months there will be new leaf will be coming so we have to go for prophylactic treatment overall all the palms at 15 days intervals we have to check it up and identify the uh, bud rot incidence and monitor adopt curative treatment in the initial stage itself because we can go for cure the disease but the problem is if it is advanced stage it is very difficult to recover the palm so continue prophylactic fungicide treatment bi monthly till the end of december observe all the palms at 15 days interval take up curative treatments so how it is the curative treatment here i can i can show you here this is the way in which uh, when the uh, bud rot appears they when they remove this we can see that there is a rotting in the basal portion so the that can be completely we have to remove this portions this rotted portion we have to cut and uh, even adjoining one or two uh, leaflets leaf uh, that um, leaf we may have to cut then we that we can see that all the uh, rotted portions are removed then we have to apply either bordo paste we can apply or even in the mancojab riddle middle we can pour in this uh, uh portion wound uh, we can dress it and cover it with some polythene so to avoid the rain uh, 
uh, washing of this fungicides. So after a few days, we can see the new uh, shoots will come up. So only, but the problem is to recognize the this disease at the early stage, and um, that's why we are telling in the endemic area it is better to go for prophylactic measures before the onset of monsoon. You treat that with fungicide so that disease will be reduced. Once the disease comes, we can cure, but it is difficult in the initial stage itself to diagnose and treat the, uh, the this one during rainy seasons, climbing and removing this and uh, applying will be difficult and the survival percent will be less if, the, if, it, if it's delayed, the treatment is delayed. So this is about the uh, treatment of uh, bud rot affected palms. Uh, then another major disease in coconut is the basal stem rot or Tanjavur wilt is called also. So because the disease has been reported first time in the Tanjavur belt of Tamil Nadu. So it was um, uh, the, uh, it is also called as Tanjavur wilt. That's why it is the basal stem rot. It's a commonly called as, or is it caused by Ganoderma lucidum and Ganoderma aplanatum. Two species have been reported. So either Ganoderma lucidum or Ganoderma aplanatum has also been reported. Mainly we are seeing Ganoderma lucidum so what happens is, this is the soil borne fungus. So when it infects the root, so it is a, it will, uh, it will not uh, enter completely go here into the top, but what it does is it damages the root. It feed on the root, it's a uh, rot rooting will be there. That is why there will be obstruction in the nutrient and water uptake by the palms. So by that um, uh, time you see these palms, the leaves will become yellowing and there will be drooping of the leaves. This is the symptoms which we can see slight yellowing will be there on the, this one and then there will be uh, drooping of the leaves. So this is what uh, reported, uh, this, th this is what the symptom of basal stem rot disease. You should not, uh, uh, there will be sometimes during drought period and there is a nutrient deficiency also there will be yellowing as well as the grouping of leaves that we should see first whether there is uh, any uh, due to the drought uh, situation or uh, nutrient problem, then only we will be able to exactly diagnose. Otherwise, the typical we can see if it is irrigation is there as well as uh, uh, um, uh, uh, nutrition has been given everything, but still there is a yellowing and drooping, then we can very sure that this is the due to Ganoderma disease. So, the top will be like this and the basal portion there will be a bleeding in the stem that's the basal that's why it is called basal stem rot here there will be rotting of the leaf, uh, basal portion slowly the fungal will uh, destroy this uh, basal portion slowly so that is the uh, reason the fungus ganoderma will be in the soil and damaging the root and there will be a bleeding patches from the base of the uh, stem so that hole on the top as i told the there will be a, a drooping of the leaves and yellowing and only the crown will be left. This is in Arecanut also same, same problem is there. It comes in Arecanut also. So this is the mushrooms type later on the Ganoderma produce the fruiting body actually. So in the later stage by the, uh, the fruiting bodies are produced on the basal portion of the stem or in the, uh, this coconut also, you can see when the, this is in the advanced stage, this uh, usually fruiting bodies comes by the time already the damage to the root system as well as the stem would have been occurred. So these are the how to diagnose whether it is the basal stem. Based on symptoms, as I told, initial yellowing and drooping of the leaves, one is the one symptom. Then we have to find out whether root decay is there. And the root decay we can brought to the samples and we can isolate for the pathogen fungal isolation. We can observe the uh, Ganoderma isolation and find out whether it is uh, uh, Ganoderma wilt or not. Then of course the serological methods have been developed, PCR based diagnosis, but none of them at the field level. As you know, the serological diagnosis also can able to detect only once you isolate the pathogen from the soil, as well as from the uh, PCR also, you have to isolate the pathogen first, Ganoderma from the soil and we have to do. Still uh, the diagnosis, directly at the field level for this disease has not yet come a molecular diagnostics or serological based on the symptoms we have to do otherwise
from the pathogen we have to isolate from the roots so this is the isolated uh, pathogen you can see so this is boninensis is not in uh, presented but though one reports were there in other countries especially in oil palm this has been major problem this species whereas in coconut we are seeing lucidum in india especially in aplanatum also in some places so these are the basidiospores this is the fungus which contains uh, this mushroom type body fruiting body produces so this is the then how to manage this disease is um, bleeding patches will be there as i told so removal of dead palms and palms in the advanced stages of the disease and destruction of the bowl and root bits of these palms isolation of diseased palms from healthy palms by digging isolation trenches of 1 meter deep as i told this disease is spreading through root contact because one plant is infected with ganoderma means other palms slowly through the roots it will healthy palms it will go to healthy palms root so it is mainly root contact that's why as soon as the disease in one palm is affected noticed so it is advised to go for trenching make a trench and isolate those palm from the other uh, palms addition of 50 kg fym green leaves per palm per year and trichoderma what we have seen is trichoderma enriched neem cake every year twice at least six monthly if you give in those gardens slowly the inoculum load of this uh, ganoderma will be reduced and uh, the incidences of this ganoderma will will come down and root feeding quarterly with hexaconazole once the symptoms are noticed and we have seen that that particular palm has to be recovered means we have to go for hexaconazole 2 ml in 100 ml water and soil drenching with 1% bodo mixture we can uh, do it this is only for the uh, when there is a symptom appears to recover the palms we can go for quarterly root feeding and trichoderma application to the soil this type of integrated approach will help to uh, recover the palm and intercropping as we suggested most of the even our um, earlier crop production also you must have heard that intercropping or mixed cropping in coconut is more profitable as well as uh, this is more uh, recommended for pest and disease uh, suppression also then uh, another disease fungal disease is stem bleeding it is uh, caused by thelaviopsis paradoxa this is also a soil borne fungus but uh, the conidia will enter through this cracks this cracks in the coconut you must have need that will be some small cracks so this can enter through cra cracks and infect the this uh, slowly it will uh, produce uh, um, this uh, multiply inside the uh, tissues bark tissues so it will go up like this if you are neglecting initially there may be slight small bleeding patches then slowly if there is no taken much care it will uh, go up and the slowly the uh, palm become uh, top will be less because there will be slightly in the advanced stages restriction in the water movement and leaves become yellow and uh, yield will be reduced so you can see here if it is um, though it is not going up to xylem completely little bit damage will be there here on there all the tissues will get damaged so there will be uh, in the severe cases there will be problem in the uh, uh, palm uptake of nutrients as well as water so it will so exoconidia it is also a form of uh, fungus as i told it is produced this type of conidia these are available in the our uh, details whoever require we, we can have it to help if anybody is uh, want to study more about this fungus i am not able to give details here it is available in the literatures we will be able to help you if any student who are pursuing want to study more about this they can contact me hmm? these are the management then how to control this stem bleeding also means bleeding in case of stem bleeding this fungus enters through cracks and uh, cracks on the stem and this may be anywhere whereas in case of uh, ganoderma wilt the mainly the bleeding patches you will see only at the base of the plant where we where we that's why we call it as basal stem rot this bleeding patches in anywhere on the upper surface of the trunk also if we see upper uh, um, uh, uh, zone of the trunk then it is uh, uh, stem bleeding we can identify of course um, uh, when we check it we can uh, the same type of uh, way because both are of the same uh, class of fungus uh, we can able to manage both by 
the same like uh, trichoderma we can uh, able to manage this disease by incorporating trichoderma over the two three years if we apply your um, soil with trichoderma this fungus population will be reduced and we can able to manage this disease so this is the major three diseases then another uh, major problem always you may able to you if you are uh, going to coconut gardens the always farmers asking is the immature uh, nut fall it may not be due to disease alone but uh, farmers will ask all the nuts are falling what to do so this nut falling immature small buttons to big nuts are falling so it is a, a direct loss this causing so genetic causes soil factors drought or water clogging it may be different as i listed here this different factors may in, may be due to this uh, may be because of this there may be nut fall so but the what we will see is fungal infection also can lead to nut fall this is that what we have to see whenever there is a nut fall we have to see for uh, fallen nuts if we see that type of uh, 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 this lesions this black lesions we can see some blackening is there then we are sure that there is a fungal infection and we can go for uh, management of this and this type of cracks will commonly come mainly because of deficiency of potassium or boron so we have to check it soil nutrient status we should ask the farmers to go for soil test based nutrient application and well as this uh, wherever there is a fungus infection starts we can ask or even in sometimes the mite infestation eriopid mite they cause the uh, uh, nuts as well as uh, then there will so uh, then immature nut fall and fruit rot is another uh, as fungal infection i told buttons before and after fertilization it may fall eriopid mite infested nuts mature nuts and stored nuts these all may be affected by the fungal infection so this is the uh, immature nut fall what we are suggesting is wherever fungal infection is there we can spray the fungicide like uh, 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 that uh, carbon denim plus mango jab we can spray of course uh, no hexaconazole we are recommending because um, carbon denim as mango jab as many of you must have seen there is under some uh, category to be banned it is not at banned but it is in the list of to be banned so and alternatively we can suggest for hexaconazole also 0.1% hexaconazole will be effective for many of this um, uh, leaf blight or leaf spot causing fungus as well as this uh, nut infecting fungus so sooty mold associated with blight this is the another white fly infestation in coconut you must have heard so this type of uh, blackening though it is not a disease this is associated with the farmers perceive this as a disease because they see not the white fly they feel that it has their coconut has become black all the leaf this is mainly due to a fungus uh, sooty mold fungus so this is also we are not recommending any control for this only we can go for maximum starch accumulation and we have found that naturally it will go once the pest population reduces so we have to take the management for, for the pest white fly then we can reduce this sooty mold infestation then another important fungal disease as i have uh, told it is uh, lassitiplodia theobrami and fungus which causes the leaf blight this type of blight this is mainly seen in uh, um, tamil nadu karnataka also even in kerala not those severe but in other the tamil nadu andhra and karnataka in certain locations a very severe incidence of this type of blight will be there as you can see the blighting blight from the tip of the leaf and whole leaves looks like completely burnt so this was reported in 1984 but in recent years probably due to the change in climate or temperature this particular fungus has uh, incidence has been increased and affected leaf starts drying from the tip downwards and uh, this is this is the typical symptom even sometimes the nuts also get infected and fallen so what we uh, recommend uh, is uh, to go for root feeding with hexaconazole or propiconazole they can go for root feeding 2 ml per liter of water because spraying is very difficult of course tnau has come up with uh, one fungus uh, that uh, biocontrol uh, formulations also to root feeding so that can be checked if to check the disease uh, spread further this is the another uh, major uh, important disease in palms or phytoplasmal disease you must have heard about uh, 
phytoplasma they are the like bacteria like but not bacteria they are divided of cell walls which comes under molecules you must have uh, uh, studied in microbiology molecules about molecules and plant pathogens mainly phytoplasma which was uh, earlier called as mycoplasma like organisms they were reported in 1967 by dai and his associates in so later many palms which were known as unknown etiology this is coconut root wilt in case of root wilt during 19 1880s due to flood in certain southern kerala it was noticed that some of the coconut palms started wilting type symptoms then uh, it was initially many years it was the cause of this disease was not known later it was known that it is caused by phytoplasma so this is uh, the phytoplasmal disease in the world over different phytoplasmas are involved uh, in different types of disease though they called in different name but most of them are called by phytoplasma uh, it is when root wilt and tatipaka earlier in andhra pradesh that slight symptom was different but it is not present now as of now there is no such a disease tatipaka disease whereas root wilt is one of the major disease then lethal yellowing it is not present in india this is the same uh, phytoplasma caused by phytoplasma belong to different groups but it is not present in india it causes the lethal whereas in you know, a root wilt is not a lethal uh, disease it causes the uh, debilitating disease slowly so these are different types of phytoplasma disease reported in different uh, parts of uh, uh, the world so but in india mainly we are seeing the coconut root wilt is the major problem it is a coconut and yellow leaf disease also the same arecanut the almost same time both have started appearing and mostly in kerala and karnataka and parts of tamil nadu we are able to, we are seeing this disease so uh, annually there are they are estimated is all uh, long back estimated now the loss may be more around uh, 968 million nuts were estimated once uh, long back uh, this one monetary loss may goes up to 3 million rupees so this is the major uh, factor one of the major attributed in kerala for the low productivity of the coconut though coconut is the major area in kerala the productivity of coconut is low mainly one of the major reason attributed is the root wilt disease so root wilt most of the southern eight district it is completely present in all this eight district whereas in northern districts uh, there is very isolated pockets uh, in recent years have been noticed but there is no uh, comparatively it is free from root wilt only southern eight districts in kerala are uh, this disease is prevalent so now uh, last uh, almost 10 years or so it has spread to tamil nadu also in the adjoining this area to kerala mainly Uh, this uh, teni area kanyakumari as well as koimutur little bit so this has been uh, reported so uh, this uh, is about arecanut also same way in karnataka as well as kerala fully it is there this yellowing problem in arecanut still uh, uh, work is going on for the, this aspects the root wilt affected palm you can see here the bending of the leaves one of the major uh, first classic symptom is the bending of the leaflets like this placidity what we call and yellowing and marginal necrosis this yellowing on the margins and necrosis these are the typical symptoms of root wilt disease and mine midwall yellowing also sometimes notice directly this yellowing will be there like this and this inflorescence will be uh, necrosis and no yield will over the years there will not be any yield only palm you will see and these palms sometimes in tamil nadu area all we have seen that mainly yellowing type down uh, this one and uh, drooping of the that uh, placidity of the leaves are noticed uh, this is in again in arecanut the as i told in uh, for many years pathologists worked on this aspects and they could not find any this one during 1983 when the electron microscopy was there came so when they have observed we could able to find that the phytoplasma like bodies in the phloem tissues of the affected palms so based on that it was um, uh, observed that it has been um, decided that this may be phytoplasma involvement then lot of palms they have um, uh, observed and found that it is caused by the phytoplasma uh, 
then later dean staining and uh, the techniques were followed and a lot of work was done um, and found that found that it is a phytoplasma disease later as you know phytoplasma you all may be knowing that oxytetracycline application will remit the symptoms so they also checked whether it is uh, to prove whether it is a phytoplasma so there was a treatment with oxytetracycline and the remission of symptoms was observed so this was uh, uh, reported then uh, distilled water and this is the otc as i told there are the previous experiments have been done about this to prove that but it cannot be used as a control measure because remission of symptoms in tetracycline treated palms transmission by odor further evidence to suggest that it is a phytoplasmal disease the this what the then physiologically also there are a lot of studies on how the changes <coughs> happen in the palms then uh, afterwards in 1980s and 90s the serological detection has been developed the we have developed elisa test also now also we are following elisa test for diagnosis of this uh, mother palms one of the aspect to go for this is as you know like any other virus disease or phytoplasma disease or viroid disease there is no uh, cure that we cannot apply the uh, bactericide or antibiotics or fungicides to control them only we have to go for uh, virus free or uh, phytoplasma free palms and um, if they are resistant it will be very good otherwise at least planting material if they are free we can able to reduce the inoculum and uh, that is the space what we are using is to identify the mother palms the elisa we are using and making that the palms are free from the root wilt pathogen uh, fungal uh, that uh, phytoplasma so that we can use it for uh, as a mother palm to go for uh, breeding work so elisa test has been uh, developed as well as uh, pcr uh, nested pcr later in the has been has been also been used to Uh, detect the phytoplasma so this has though we have able to use this pcr and able to detect the phytoplasma through nested pcr and uh, real time pcr but in the both the arecanut and coconut we are, it is very difficult to get uh, real reliable continu continuously conti continuous detection because uh, because some problem with the detection uh, this one though there there is a report uh, of detecting phytoplasma uh, field level detection for um, uh, as well as sampling because the phytoplasma distribution in the uh, palm is not uniform and uh, it is uh, not uh, uniform as well as not timely because each time there may be some some uh, time of the year it may be in the roots sometime we may get in the leaf sometime we may get in the phloem tissues in certain locations so that is the problem we are not able to detect uh, standardize the procedure still uh, exactly to pcr based however uh, elisa based to get to certain extent we will be able to we are following uh, for the uh, screening of mother palms uh, still we are working on it to make the more robust and field level as well as uh, highly effective molecular diagnostic for this uh, phytoplasmal disease this is transmitted by as we are know it is available in the literature in our website you can go through and see details this is caused by the plant protista moista one of the, uh, the vector then lacebug stipernitis typica these two are found to be vector of this disease phytoplasma because they are not moving as such they have to be carried by the like virus this uh, plant hopper will feed on the phloem of the healthy palms it will produce the this is so this is the then how to go for management lot of work was been done more than the 100 years only the uh, best is to prevent the disease from further spreading because there is no cure for this disease so lot of uh, only we have to manage from the uh, palm if the palms health overall health is important because as it has been noted i have um, not included here that could have been uh, more that symptoms once we comes this type of root wilt affected palms affected by the leaf rot lot of uh, fungus there are two three fungus like colletotrichum and fusarium they make infect this leaves and they become rot completely and that makes aggravate the disease severity and and um, severity and cause the palms so we have to control this leaf rot 
as well as they become more susceptible to this insects and pests so we have to manage these things um, the, then we can able to uh, though this disease is there phytoplasma is there it may not cause uh, loss uh, uh, immediately but it may, we have to take more care so we have uh, nutrient as well as basin management this uh, details are available in our website also as well as in our app we will be able to give you details also so we are demonstrating this type of things as of now and uh, this has been already demonstrated and we are trying to improve upon with the other molecular approaches whether we can attempt uh, to go for managing the disease uh, and uh, our breeders have also developed the there are three three varieties kalpa raksha which is comparatively field tolerant this kalpa shri and kalpa sankara these three uh, coconut varieties are there which is now we are um, uh, focusing especially in our uh, this is endemic area to multiply these uh, varieties and spread these varieties more in the endemic area so that their field tolerant and field level resistance is there in uh, two of them so this will be more useful for the farmers this is what uh, has been done then uh, nematode there is no much uh, disease as such in the nematode in case of uh, this one but uh, this nematode disease is uh, not in india it's a red ring nematode called it's an invasive nematode species in the world so every every wherever it is not there in india it is not there of course this is the type of uh, symptoms it will appear so this is the just i am giving for uh, for um, information so this this is not present in india it is, but it is a quarantine pest we have to be observed for this then this is of quarantine significance there are um, certain diseases which are uh, we have to, like as i told lethal yellowing though phytoplasma disease is there this lethal type because this phytoplasma in other countries where the the strain of phytoplasma will kill the palms within few months uh, infection whereas in our um, uh, india the phytoplasma disease is not killing the palms immediately so it is a debilitating disease so we can able to manage whereas um, in case of this lethal yellowing it is very difficult to manage once it comes means within a few months um, that this whole uh, uh, tree will be killed so that is why um, uh, we have to be careful so uh, it is not uh, allowed to take the uh, seed nuts or seedlings from one country affected country to other countries phytoplasma disease present uh, countries so because of this uh, problem so it is not uh, known that seed borne uh, inoculum though embryo carries this one phytoplasma still not at um, uh, the transmission is not at proved but uh, the carrying of phytoplasma in the embryo of the this has been known that's why only the in vitro plants uh, embryo transfer internationally has been permitted for phytoplasmal disease okay so it is not been done then kadang kadang is of course uh, philippines and some area only it has not yet been spread so there is no decay but definitely it has to be one of the major and other virus in india there is no virus disease as of now in coconut but um, in uh, some parts of one over two and other area foliar decay virus is there which has been reported and characterized also so it has to be it is regarded as a quarantine pest so whenever uh, of course uh, it is not being uh, taken uh, this um, seedlings that's why there may not be much risk in mold but uh, anyway this has to be observed it should not be uh, introduced to india in any means that is the uh, this one then uh, what are the major issues based on i i am not able to cover in detail about the pathogen everything but uh, in brief i have told so whatever the details if you anybody any of you are uh, interested you can come uh, give me an mail if you want any more information my email id will be there and you can whatsapp me or even ekalpa our app you can post the your uh, uh, if you have seen any damage or any symptoms if you are not able to uh, identify you can post it and we will be able to help or any information related to coconut or arecanut or cocoa you can mail me if you want any help in that diagnosis and other things we will be able to tell and compared to other crops just in conclusion i would like to tell that uh, even in other crops just for one uh, plant if uh, goes is also very important in case of coconut compared to other um, annual crops like paddy or rice or maize even one or two plants died means no need to bother even farmers also not bothered but whereas in case of coconut even loss of one palm it is adult 
farm it is uh, you know that is a perennial crop so we have to take the disease in perspective of a individual plant not as a population of plants so uh, that is the uh, one that i want to highlight and it is perennial in nature so there is a pest and disease throughout the year so monitoring is a very critical factor survey and monitoring is a, one of the major uh, issues we have to monitor constantly then uh, changing climate nowadays as well as uh, pests and diseases are invasive coming up as you know the white flies have come up uh, from one area that uh, aedipid mites like that and uh, mechanization many of our um, uh, are not mechanized yet we need mechanized either to drone or um, uh, remote control operated uh, mechanisms to apply the crop protection measures otherwise nowadays uh, skilled laborers are not available to apply to the crop protection chemicals and uh, it will be very difficult to for farmers to so this in this area we are working out now many of um, uh, using drone based surveillance and uh, mechanized uh, crop protection measures so that is what is the needed of the need of the hour and uh, scientific cultivation practices non adoption is another because uh, big fluctuation prices in coconut farmers are not able to adopt fully scientific cultivation practices that leads to more pest and disease may be in a perennial crop it will be even two years uh, one year if they are not attending that uh, then again to recover the farms will be very difficult these are some of the issues i just highlighting if any more uh, this there i am happy if you have any questions thank you thank you one and all thank you sir thank you dr sir uh, for the insightful and comprehensive presentation on these uh, aspects and uh, now the floor is open for discussion if uh, any queries please raise students hello sir hello sir uh, actually what is the phytoplasma activity inside the coconut palm what see phytoplasma is a wallless uh, prokaryote as you know what it does it is it will be there in the uh, phloem sap that it produces certain hormones which which will divert the host metabolism mainly that has that is that is an interesting study if you go through in most of the palm not only coconut many phytoplasma disease in sesamum pylori or uh, other um, uh, vegetables they have studied in detail how the phytoplasma phytoplasma when the phloem it will uh, uh, metabolism post metabolism it will alter that is the problem that is why you will see the whole flo floral structure will be malformed to pylori or that what whatever the different types of symptoms are yellowing because uh, the, this type of symptoms it causes it is it is uh, uh, in the phloem it will act and the it, it has got lot of uh, uh, what is that uh, produce the uh, effectors which will uh, make the post metabolism altered that's the major problem in phytoplasma uh, sir another one hello hello sir another one sir hello. sir uh, you told like uh, hello uh. Audible audible. Uh, sir, yeah, audible. you are uh, telling about yes. you are telling about removing the decayed tissue in case of the bud rot near the uh, near the fruiting region. If we going to remove it completely, the hmm. surrounding uh, yeah. inflorescence won't they be affected there? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Sir. Sir, the, the surrounding inflorescence near the decay tissue. If you are going to remove them, hello. Huh. Sir, if you are going to remove hello. the decayed uh, tissues in the bud rot, huh? the surrounding inflorescence won't they get yeah, affected? Yeah, uh, but I think uh, you are talking about. Hmm. Hmm. actually this is the tissue rotten portion no no actually what is that is mainly the uh, mastum but getting infected by uh, 
uh, fungus. So what we have Hindi sir, are you there? Hello? Disturbance. Uh, continue, continue sir, continue. It will not affect the they have to remove and uh, uh, burn it. Other Uh, there is some disturbance, it seems. Uh, we'll try to fix it now. Just hold on, please. Uh, sir, please unmute, sir. Issues here, I think, uh, net. Uh, there is some net connection problem there. They might have put switch, switched it off uh, uh, there. <laughs> and now it is, now, now, uh, yeah, now it now is okay. Is, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what, what his question was. But rot, uh, if we remove, the other portions may get uh, affected. So there is no question of other portion because it is mainly the uh, bud portion or the sphere leaf, which is getting infected by the phytophthora. So if we remove that in the early stage, so in the late, if it is too late by the time we treat it, it may be difficult to recover. That's what we are telling early stage, as soon as the uh, drooping initiate, that time itself, if we remove and uh, uh, treat them with the fungicides, we can able to recover the palm. Otherwise, the it will not be possible to recover the uh, palm. That's what... Uh, 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 sir, uh, sir, another one, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, the uh, in the Ganoderma basidiocarp, uh, hmm. I came to know about uh, it. There are some some positive antibiotic that could be extracted from it, and we can commercialize it. Uh, do you have any idea about that, sir? The, the Ganoderma actually Ganoderma has been uh, used to exploited for many medicinal properties, a lot of medicines have been uh, being uh, developed, as well as even in China, a lot of uh, Ganoderma, if you Google also, you will see Ganoderma lucidum is not considered as a pathogen by them. They exploited that for medicinal purposes and a lot of uh, work even in India, many mushroom research institutes uh, in uh, Solon, they are working on Ganoderma boss based, uh, as you told, they, they are extracting the Ganoderma uh, from Ganoderma mushroom spores the uh, metabolites and that has been used as a medicinal properties so that has been exploited so here in our institute since we are it is
सर हेलो हाँ सर ओके 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 नो प्रॉब्लम सर देन वी कैन डू वन थिंग डे आफ्टर टुमारो दैट आर यू कैन एट क्लासेस देयर यू कैन इन बिटवीन यू कैन जॉइन एंड सम आह यस यस ओके 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 आई 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 डू दैट ओके सर नो प्रॉब्लम नो प्रॉब्लम सर कैरियर friends there is a problem uh, with the server where he is sitting so server server got down these are the things sometimes no <laughs> helpless so what he told uh, day after tomorrow we will be having uh, the final session on this crop protection that is the disease management of other plantation crops we are we are dealing uh, arikanata and coco so uh, in during that time that will be taken by another uh, scientist from uh, karnataka regional station vittal so uh, vinayaka hegde sir will be joining and uh, he will be answering the other queries and uh, the chat box queries also so sorry for uh, this inconvenience to us it was almost going well and uh, but there is no connection there now again if you restart it will be difficult so he will be completing his remaining whatever queries you have you can you just note it down and uh, you can ask day after tomorrow along with the other that that day we will be completing all this crop protection aspects is it all right okay sir okay 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 logesh and so sorry for that no so uh, let us see because this is actually this technical issues at times we may not be able to ensure but it is okay so far so good so uh, we will uh, stop it down uh, uh, here and uh, day after tomorrow we'll be meeting and this or your queries on that day okay have a nice day bye bye